So, APL is quite an old language, but there are some features that have been added over the years, and I just want to list off four particular features that I think exemplify what you might call modern APL. So the first one is nested arrays. Originally, all APL arrays were these flat, rectangular structures, something like a high-dimensional cuboid. Um, and they're often thought of in terms of their axes, right? So this is quite simple to visualize in a kind of 3D diagram. So we have our first axis, the leading axis, going through these two planes, our second axis of length 3 going down along which the rows lie, and then the columns lie along the last axis, which in this case has length 4. But there's another way to think about these arrays as well, which is a little bit more intuitive when you see a 3D array in its display form in the session like this, and that's in terms of its cells. So here we have two major cells, or matrices, these arrays of rank 2. So it's a single array with two subarrays that are matrices. And then within each matrix, we have three rows. And then each row is a vector of length 4. The use of flat arrays means that if you want to process text, for example, a list of words would often be best represented as actually a character matrix. So you have to sort of pad with spaces like this. And we can actually show the spaces uh, asking for quads at where it's equal to spaces. And it requires a bit more thinking to process text in this way, but those techniques are often still valid in modern APL because they often offer the best performance, for example. However, people obviously see the value, and recent APLs all have implemented some kind of nested arrays. So I can use this function here, which we'll come back to a little bit later, and say I have uh, several words of different lengths. I can split these all up. And now I've got a, a nested list of character lists. So I can use tally and ask for how many. I've got five words here, or the tally of each gives me the length of each word. The next thing that I'd say uh, defines modern APL are the defens. So these were invented by John Scholes. Uh, he's the voice and fingers behind the famous Conway's Game of Life in APL video. And these are just functions that are defined by curly braces, and omega defines the right argument. Alpha refers to the left argument. So here we can easily see a Boolean vector where a 1 indicates where there's not a comma. And if we juxtapose our, our, our right argument with that matrix, we now have a list, nested list of lists. And if we use mix, then we can overlay them in a text matrix. And yes, you can see that zeros indicate the commas. The last thing we're then able to do is quite conveniently uh, ask APL, I want to partition this array, can you please separate out each section where there are consecutive ones. And this is our same function as the train from earlier. So yeah, defens have become really popular for people learning APL for the first time nowadays, because they are quite convenient to use, and really nice to develop with and iterate upon and explore different solutions. But if you find yourself using the same type of patterns over and over, then you might start to get towards trains. Um, let's start with a fork. So if fork is basically three functions in isolation. Here you can see we have two, so there's not equals and this partition function. Um, there is actually a third function we can use that takes two functions and only returns one of them, and that's right tack. So right tack returns the right function and left tack, sorry, the right argument, and left tack returns the left argument. And in fact, we don't need to be wrapped in a defunct to get that effect. But that means that we can express this construct as alpha right omega. And now we have this structure of 
a dyadic function, binary function applied between our arguments, another binary function applied between our arguments, and then the result of those is processed by a third function. And once you have this structure, then you're able to basically take away a lot of the syntactic fluff and get this really neat package that is a fork. It's called a fork. Um, and it's three, three or any odd number actually of functions in isolation. So in this case, it's isolated because we separated it from the arguments using parentheses, but you can also assign it to a name and that also causes the function to be isolated from the arguments. Trains to me are a kind of spiritual evolution of the APL syntax um, in the sense where you start with this core set of the primitive functions and operators and these constitute your core notation and language for solving most of your problems doing the actual problem solving and encoding a lot of the business logic in your programs but then with trains you get to have these kind of compound words and while you could have them you know explicitly written as we had before here we get all of those functions that have been composed together into a single syntactic package that's really easy to spot in a larger code structure and you can really easily see what's going on. Another really nice thing about trains is that they're easy to extend upon, right? So here we have a three train. But let's show you what a two train looks like. Two trains called an atop. Um, so in this case, we're just going to ask for what is the absolute difference between some values. So the absolute difference between five and two is three. The absolute difference between three and four is one. So this is basically the same as applying the right hand function between our arguments and applying our left hand function monadically on the result. But it's not just two and three functions, it's basically any chain of odd and even numbered functions. So if you have three functions, that's a fork. But if I add a fourth function, that function is applied monadically atop our three train. We can count the number of values in our comma separated values, or I can count the length of each value. Of course, if you're dealing with actual CSV files, I'd recommend using the quad CSV function instead. If you have much longer functions, this can become unwieldy. Um, I'll link to a webinar at the end of this that talks through in more detail sort of how and when you want to use trains. But the point is for short functions and where you're finding yourself using really similar constructs over and over, this becomes a really nice notation for doing that sort of function manipulation. The last thing which I think really exemplifies modern APL is called leading axis theory. So if I start with a 3D array of the numbers from 1 to 18, and we assign this to our matrix, the sort of original way to sum things is along the rows by default. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 15, 7, 8, 9 is 24, etc. However, if I use the slash bar instead, I'm now summing down the planes or down the first axis. So 1 plus 10 is 11, 2 plus 11 is 13, 5 plus 14 is 19, etc. Working along the leading axis like this allows me to use the rank operator to control which subarrays I want to apply my function to. So another quite famous train is this one, which is the sum divided by the count, otherwise known as the average. So here's 1 plus 10 is 11, divided by 2 is 5.5, etc. But if I want to find the average of numbers down the column of each matrix, I can just apply this same function with rank 2, and now you can see 1 plus 4 plus 7 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4. There's a lot more to say about leading axis theory. It's quite a useful mental model to develop if you want to work with certain big data frameworks, things like pandas and numpy. But APL offers you a notation to explore these ideas, data and algorithms in a fairly natural way. I'm not going to go into loads of the details, but I'll leave you with some links for other things that you can look at if you're interested about any of these topics. So there's an APL wiki article on nested arrays, but I'd say just go and play with them. You'll figure it out soon enough. Um, similarly with defens, if you want to know in more detail about how trains work and when you should or shouldn't use them, um, I have a webinar. You can just search for train spotting in dialog APL. And for more on leading axis theory and using the rank operator, 
can look for a, a YouTube playlist on the Dialog Limited YouTube channel called Function Rank. Uh, so that looks like this. And that's it for my quick demonstration of four things which I think exemplify modern APL.